This week, episode 274 of Stogie Geeks, volume 2, right here. We are interviewing George Rico from Grand Habano Cigars. George comes from a rich tradition of family history. We're going to talk about that family history. We're going to talk about his role and position at Grand Habano and what's going on. And hopefully he'll give us a couple of teases as to what's new. George, welcome to the program. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is one of those segments I probably should have grabbed the Toro instead of a Robusto, right? <laughs> you know. Um, anyway, George, uh, right now I'm actually doing the Connecticut n- number one by by Grand Habano. Uh, it's a story. It's it's this is is this a staple within your lineup? Because let me tell you something: for a Connecticut, it starts off. It's a it's a it's it's a Connecticut. It's creamy, but every once in a while, you get nuances of something slightly stronger. And I don't want to say bitey, just something stronger. And you're like, oh wow, that's a pleasant surprise. It's a great stick. Yeah, it's a wonderful stick. I mean, it's one of the staples in our in our portfolio. And uh, you know, when when doing the blends, I really try to focus on exactly what you're describing. I, I try to make sure that we do a cigar that starts in a particular way changes throughout the course of the smoking and then we'll change back to something else and those hidden nuances that you're talking about that's really the focus when i'm blending a cigar so mm-hmm. i'm glad you- yeah absolutely absolutely so um take us through your role and positioning at grand habano you 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 come from a from a uh a third generation fa- uh, family history yeah yeah i'm actually uh would be a fourth generation farmer tobacco farmer and i'm third generation uh cigar manufacturer here in the states i would be considered my father myself started the business back in 97 and uh it's been a great uh 20 years plus we've been focusing on making quality cigars uh, very unique and through the process of the last 20 years the industry has changed a lot and we try to evolve with it Mm. it's been a lot of fun i'm the president of grand abano cigars i focus here on the distribution and my father uh, focuses on the manufacturing down in Honduras. Mm-hmm. So before we get into some of the blends, uh, you, you had mentioned it. The industry has changed. Well, what have you? What are kind of some of your your takeaways? And the reason why I ask you this specifically is here on the show, I tend to kind of divide the sticks, right? You 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 get these sticks. You get what what I call uh, classic facings, the ones that have been around for a while. And then you have the boutique. I like to use this is exclusive to me. It's not so much uh, the the other host on the show, but I like to use the boutique revolution. It almost seems like every week there's someone new, uh, especially yeah. maybe the past three years. Not so much with all this FDA stuff, but you know, over the past three years, it's, it's, it's always something new. It's always a new cigar company. I go to a, I go to my local tobacconist. They're always handing me something new, you know, uh, and, and stuff like that. So, so what are kind of your takeaways with, with that? Well, I mean, you know, it's a great thing. Competition is always good. I mean, at the end of the day, it brings more people into the, the industry, into the market. I've seen it evolve from, uh, you know, really when I started when I was 18 uh, to uh, what we call the cigar boom all the way through uh, CAO being uh, predominantly the biggest brand Mm. when it almost started uh, and also some of the Padrones and the introduction of Opus X as an example. Mm. Those are what you consider probably core lines. We've introduced our line around that same time in the late 90s. And then you had the revolution, like you called it, of the boutique and how that's evolved and how a lot of the core lines or, or brands that you see out there now uh, contributed to that. Uh, an example, Tatuaje at some time was what you consider boutique and it was very interesting and unique in the packaging and the name. And I think that sort of gave a lot of people ideas of how to change the industry and all these new brands that have come out since. It's great for the industry. Uh, but I think it takes away from a lot of different aspects of the industry. Uh, I think you should divide usually brands between, you know, the big corporations, the unique brands that have been around for 100 years plus maybe with some of these names that come from Cuba. And then it, the evolution of brands like myself, where it's uh, small manufacturers, mid-sized manufacturers that uh, make 
manufacture, grow, I should say, manufacture and distribute their own brands like myself. And then you got the guys that sort of have guys like myself or other manufacturers make their brands that are unique or different. And that's sort of how the the evolution of the industry in the last 20 years. I it's just been a lot in between then, but I try to cover as much as possible. In there. Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I, I remember when like uh, CAO was the hipsters on the block, if you will, and yeah. Drew was around, but it was certainly not what Drew is today. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, I remember when, you know, Rocky Patel in the decade uh, post Indian tobacco, Rocky Patel boutique right i mean yeah. let's face it you know i remember when it's like well, rocky patel like well what is that oh it's a cigar named after rocky patel who's rocky mm -hmm. patel right and yeah. then now yeah. you can't walk into any cigar establishment and not know <laughs> who rocky patel is right and then you know and then and then you know you you have the christophs that come along and then you have the the tatuaje viaje and here in the northeast kind of launched at the same time you know Tatuaje seemed here in the Northeast to gather most of that market share, uh, most of the buzz and the hype, and Viaje was in the background. Christoph came comes in uh, along the same times, you know, of the decade, and and then you know the Cao's, the Griffins, the Monte Cristos, the Monte Cristo Platinums, the La Poranagas, uh dare I say Altidus, you know, uh, Grand Habano, uh, Grand, Grand Habano you kind of like it, it's kind of it's kind of like a horse race right you know it's like you know especially what i find out is that the consumers love the boutiques right and the boutiques came at a pretty interesting time because you know um when you have social media right which is a huge factor whenever we get a boutique company on we always talk about the impact of social media and then we had uh, probably 20, 30 episodes ago, we had Drew Estate, who's a sponsor of the show, and we had jo uh, Joe Grow, the digital specialist for Drew Estate on the show. And you're like, well, wait a minute, you know, a, a digital specialist? Like, yeah, they have a specific, because they're, they're the hipsters that are in town, you know what I mean? As opposed to a place to see it. So there, there is a position for everybody. But what I find fascinating is that the older brands, right, that have been around for a while, like yourselves, have to create newer blends to almost, I don't want to say mimic, but kind of replicate or play in that boutique space, right? Because let's face it, I mean, you know, R Romeo and Julieta comes out with a Nicaraguan and you're like, what? Avo comes out with a Nicaraguan. So obviously what I'm saying is correct when you have bl brands like that uh, trying to, to do that. And then you have the boutiques on the other side who are trying to be like you guys and trying to really get bigger. And with that comes a cost because how many times had the first round of cigars come, 100,000 cigars or 250,000, whatever the batch is, and then they go to round two or three and it's not the same. As far mm -hmm. as quality, so it's yeah, like, well. yeah. So it's like, do you want a faster horse, or do you want more market share, or do you, it's like, it, so it's kind of like now. What I find from doing all these interviews week after week, that's the conversation that that we have now. So when we get someone like like yourself, it's not so much wrapper binder filler, it's market position. These are our hot spots. So, uh, how is that frustrating for you? <laughs> well, you know, I think when I said competition is great, I think this is a, a, a direct uh, representation of that. I think you're right about the fact that a lot of uh, smaller guys want to be uh, or reach a level the same as we are um, in market share. But at the end of the day, uh, when I came out, I was boutique. I, I, you know, I have a huge representation. I've been around as long, but you know, to a degree. I think there's still a lot of people that don't know and there's a lot of people that come into the market in the last 10 years. The evolution of the market in the last 10 years has, has changed two to three times, especially with the micro boutiques and the boutiques and a lot of the different brands. And you're right, I mean, those, the bigger guys sort of want to play in that market where 
uh, they create uh, boutique lines that are unique to specific markets, trying to make them uh, appealing to the consumer. But at the end of the day, my opinion on it is, is the fact that if you have a good quality cigar, that you have something that's unique, that is always consistent, uh, you will evolve and grow into the market and become someone like myself and try to compete for that other additional market uh, share. Mm -hmm. So uh, overall, um, I've seen it change, like you said, from JD uh, introducing you know Acid and then evolving to Liga and how people wanted to copy that and bring their own uh, sort of representation of what their their mind and their minds what a, a cigar should taste like and they look at a lot of different things so it's good it's great to have people out there uh, unfortunately with the FDA there's going to be restrictions on some of the great uh, blending aspects of the industry what allows us to grow and continue to have sort of an interest in in, in the cigar industry mm -hmm. hopefully those things will change uh, we'll see what happens in the future but overall, I mean, with Granabanos, we've been here for quite some time, and we have plenty of blends that we've created over the years that I think a lot of people in the industry have, or the consumer base has not tried, or haven't tried, or, or weren't around at that time in the last 10, 15 years. So we'll have uh, unique things for them to try. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think, like I said, you know, you, you as, as one of the classic staples like yourself, you have to focus on something extremely different than the boutiques and so our conversations from yeah. from my perspective uh what's what's important to them is not so much what's important for a company like 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 yours you know when you talk about you know b b uh building a loyal fan base um you know uh market share trying to push for newer innovative products i mean you know let's face it you you you, you kind of can't stick around with just you know the the regular row sticks uh you know for too long and you know and what i found fascinating is it's been like that till about two years ago like i said when avo started going with the nicaraguans and then romeo and julieta and i'm like wow that they're, they're really the the it, it really says that you know the boutiques are here to stay and I think that with the birth of social media coming in at that time, it's played a, a big, big factor, uh, oh, I, f for sure. I think I think you're right about that. I mean, uh, social media has played a big factor in making uh, in guys like yourself. I mean, I got to tell you, uh, when I started out, uh, the only outlet for uh, communicating to the consumers was Herfer's Paradise. It was a blog site many, many years ago. Sure. And evolve into different blogs and guys like yourself have really uh, sort of given the industry um, another tier to be able to have a sort of a, a brand conscious uh, setting so it's, it's, it's unique yeah and it's it, I think they're here to stay and, and hopefully they, they, they do stay because uh, with competition with what guys that are innovative and different um, many guys get set in their ways and the consumer uh, might get frustrated where a lot of these different ideas come into the market. It gives me ideas and it, it makes me evolve as well. So it's always good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, competition is good. I mean, you know, it, it brings it brings more awareness to the industry, and it's it doesn't just apply to cigars. You know, recently, you know, uh, I always try to compare the cigar industry to what's going on on the outside world because sometimes, you know, in our world. You know, we, we know the players and we know what we got to do and, and there you go. But if you take like the toy industry, Toys R Us and Babies R Us forming their exit plan has built more of an awareness of, hey, we need a distribution outlet for toys, right? P people are still going to have kids and where do you buy toys? And the same thing like with the music industry. So it's all good uh, and... and um, it's very refreshing to hear your stance on the uh, competition. But let's get yeah. back to you. Let's get back to you. Take us through. I want to talk a little bit about the uh, Stay True Kid. And yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the Zulu. I want to take some time and talk about what I like from, from you guys. <laughs> so whichever one you want to talk about first, go for it. Well, uh, this, uh, the SDK line, that's sort of the focus on what we were discussing, is sort of guys like myself trying to be innovative and being uh, creative. Mm -hmm. uh, 
that's sort of the focus on blending the aspect of creating very unique cigars that have a lot of flavor. I have in my head this formula that I always uh, uh, work with when I'm blending cigars, which is a 333 formula, which I'm not going to go and tell you guys. It's very complicated, but it's a way for me to evolve into creating a line. And we, with the SDK product, uh, it's sort of where it allows me to be creative, someone that's, uh, the, that likes to do very unique blends and flavors uh, within a cigar with a natural tobacco. Um, it allows me to introduce two different lines every year. With the SDK, we've done the Zulu a couple of times. Uh, the recent one was the black and the white uh, boxes, which were the Connecticut and Habano. Mm -hmm. And the straight food kid uh, concept is basically um, something that allows me to stay focused on what I wanted to do when I got in the industry, and it's to be creative as much as possible. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and and. Take us through the the messaging and branding of you know because obviously you know you, you you have to market the product. Take us through the the how you came up with that stay true kid, if you can. Yeah, no problem. I mean the the the, the SDK concept came about uh, with uh, the idea that we wanted to create and I wanted to create a project where I could give back. Mm -hmm. And so stay true kid and SDK uh, really also stand for save the kids. And a lot of the the, the ideas that we have is it's always to partner up with an artist to pa for the packaging on the SDK with the Zulus as an example, and we contribute to a charity. Uh, the latest one that I brought up, the the, the black and the white Zulu, uh, the artwork was done by an artist, uh, which is Maspas. You can look him up on Instagram as Maspas. And um, he was actually adopted from an orphanage in Colombia. And some of the proceeds actually went towards the, 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 the orphanage with the Zulu Zulu line. Mm. We've done that with the Earth Zulu Zulu. And then also, you know, we had a product that was the SDK, which was uh, the, uh, the American Puro. The Barracuda is an example. We also had um, another really unique uh, SDK that came out a few years back that was the earlier version of the SDK line, which was the Opium. Sort of something very unique and different at the time. And, we, you know, we sort of try to focus on, on being creative with the, with the SDK line. Awesome. That's awesome. And it's great that you give back to. I mean, you know, as, as a business owner myself and entrepreneur, I really love the f i do stuff for the, within the community up here as well and you know it's 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 really good to to give back um for sure so before we get to what i like to smoke right what do you like to smoke <laughs> within your line well i gotta tell you i love to smoke a lot of different cigars uh, i smoke outside of my line and that's the next like question that's the next question. What do you like to smoke outside of your line? Well, let's stay inside for right now. Okay, great. So um, with my line, I really and, – and the Zulu Zulus I love. I mean, uh, this is a cigar that I can smoke every day. Uh, for a lot of people that know me uh, in the industry, I've always carried around Lanceros for the last 20 years. I love Lanceros. Mm. And Connecticut was the earlier uh, – what was a bundle that I used to carry around and give to people was the original Zulu Zulu in Albano in Connecticut. And so um, I love the Zulu, but if I like something stronger, I love my uh, Corojo number no. 5 Maduro, mm. uh, especially the smaller ring gauges. Uh, the true flavor stands out in my brand in the smaller ring gauges. It's sort of a focus on the balance of the wrapper, binder, and filler. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you like to smoke outside of your line? Uh, I, I really love Dion's uh, stuff. I mean, some of the stuff out there. I'm still a big fan of the, uh, what was it, the MK. Uh, that's a great stick. Uh, the, some of the Illusion, the Tatuaje stuff I love. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not because I know some of these guys. I just really appreciate what they've done in the blending. So they're very unique. Um, I, I've actually smoked some of the Perdomo cigars, the Habanos. I, I, I think some of the, the sizes that I've smoked have been very good. So I like to try a lot of different things that put, Padron Exclusivo Maduro is one of my favorite cigars out there. That's always been for the last, I don't know, I can't remember, 15 years I've been smoking that cigar. It's a <laughs> cigar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, have you tried the Tuaje Negociants, the Connecticut? No, I haven't. I haven't That's a, that. Uh, that, that hit here in the Northeast, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not, a, my go-to is not Connecticut, right? I do like a good Connecticut in the morning. Um, but let me tell you, um, they, they, they made a Connecticut and 
we have a Stogie Geek rating system here. I don't know if you're familiar with it um, there, but we, we have, and, and I gave them high ratings for sure. Uh, um, on March, hold on, let me check my, on March 19th of this year, I had the opportunity to review one of your sticks. Right. Right? So I posted it on our Stogie Geek site. Just to give you an idea of the rating system, right? Uh, we have uh, lawn mulch, <laughs> right? You, you know, you could crumple it up and, and put it in your garden, right? Uh, we have angler, meaning if you're on a boat, you um, We have try one. We have fiver, meaning that we would buy five. We have box okay. split. Box split is another rating. Box split with a friend. Box worthy. Fight Chuck Norris in Oasis, right? So obviously the the higher ratings would be a box worthy fight Chuck Norris or Oasis. And so pre organizing this interview, I had the opportunity to have the Gran Habano number no. five Limitada 2011 Maduro. Excellent. I hope it was a, 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 a Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, crap, right? Because <laughs> if you've watched the show, I really, uh, I, you know, uh, some of the listeners are like, you know, you really thought that was a fiver? That, you know, and they go back and forth and everything. Um, let me tell you something. First of all, I had the Robusto. It was a 5 by 52 right? Uh, complexity, flavor, and balance, scale of 1 to 10, I gave it straight 8s, right? awesome stick i gave it a box worthy okay and from my experience with this is this the strongest of your line in in your profile because it's certainly the strongest that i've been exposed to so far uh yeah actually it would be at this point considered the strongest cigar yeah uh, in my line the uh, uh corojo number no. five maduro um, it's definitely a, a very delicious smoke. I mean, I think it evolves. Uh, the wrappers are very unique. It was warm in 2011, mm -hmm. uh, whereas opposed to my Reserva, and that's one of the little things that I want to make sure that, that I bring out there. The caveat with that is that the Reservas are usually made that particular year, so we have Reservas from 08 all the way to 11. But the Maduro was actually a farm in 2011, and it's a sun-grown Nicaraguan uh, but it's very unique. It's a San Andreas seed sun grown in Nicaragua, which would made that cigar with the same filler and binder just extremely tasty. And in the smaller ring gauges, I love it. So I, I'm glad you uh, that too. Completely, you have our address, right? Yeah. <laughs> completely love that stick. Here's exactly. what I got from it. It delivered notes of cream, chocolate espresso, and what I notice uh, towards the uh, middle and back end, uh, awesome salty sweetness is that what you, is that is that what you were going for that that is sort of what i was going for yeah. i was really going for like a dark bitter chocolate finish yeah uh, originally and that was sort of what i was trying to do with that cigar yes yeah i completely and and i don't know who does your sales here in the northeast i'm not trying to get anybody in trouble right <laughs> but they don't have them here in the northeast and, and i'm like why why don't shops have these because first they of all what? I'm amazed. I mean, it's, it's, it's well, you know, <laughs> because different territories are very different. Mm -hmm. And that cigar, for the most part, you're right. I mean, I do really well in California, uh, the southeast, um, and also in Texas, as an example, that's considered almost a territory itself. So for the northeast, I do a lot of Connecticut and smaller ring gauges, but I'm amazed that, that it's never really picked up as much as it should because the Maduro is a tasty smoke. I, I, it's really one of my favorite ones. It is, and, and, and if you look at it, I mean, if you're a beginner smoker, you might shy away from it because it's darker, but it's not harsh at all. It's just an awesome smoke. That five by 52 size is amazing. I threw a bullet cut on that thing, and I can have those like all day, every day, for sure. Well, if you enjoy that one, I, I, I suggest you try out the Lunch Break or the Lancero or even the Petite Corona on that. Okay. Because the, the wrapper really stands out a lot more when the smaller ring gauges, and that really does give it a lot more flavor. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to have to order some. Like they're, they're, like I said, I I always try to go to the local tobacconist first, you know, always try to. And, you know, I, I tell them, I'm like, have you even, like, looked into these? Like, you, 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 you should get these, you know? For sure, they're, they're a great, great stick, you know. 
good, good ambassador for Grand Ambassador. There you go, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I love Lanceros here on the Stogie Geek Show. We, we, we often talk about um, how some of the consumers in some of the local retail shops, they don't really do that well with the Lancero size. And I really don't know why, because we always try to encourage the Stogie Geek listeners saying, hey, if you ever want an experience, just sit down in a shop and relax. And I'm not saying take your know, Lancero fishing or golfing or walking your dog or anything like that, right? But like Lanceros are so tasty. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing with Lanceros and a lot of the smaller ring gauges, um, it's and it's not to say anything bad about the consumer. I mean, it really takes someone that's a little bit has a little bit more sophisticated palate and and, and at the same time patience because some mm. of the Lanceros out there don't really have uh, the the right construction sometimes, uh, and it's a very skilled individual to make a cigar that draws and doesn't burn hot and the blends really affect it. So I could understand why there's not a lot of smokers out there. They focus more on value and size, and uh, and that's one of the things that's different with the smaller ring gauges. That's someone that really understands what their palate is telling them, how it's evolving as you're smoking a cigar. And for the most part, uh, probably that's the reason why they don't do well. Mm. Yeah, and and it's not just you. It's amazing. We always see them on the shelf, and I always, I always go to, I always try to to grab a Lancero, especially if I have time to, you know, not do computer work in the shop and really enjoy you know, talking to a friend or, you know, have having coffee or a, a, a tasty beverage or something like that, for sure, yeah. you know. Uh, your um, your uh, Maduro, your number five Limitada, goes excellent with Bloody Marys, just so you know, if you've ever... <laughs> I, I, I'm not a big fan of Bloody Marys. <laughs> <laughs> it goes, yeah, we, we, we actually do some, some, some pairings here on the show for some episodes and and you know what goes with this and everybody always says scotch whiskey but i like ch you know actually uh for that one and it's not to put a plug but my favorite is the, the sacapa uh it's a rum oh and, ron, uh, ron sacapa yeah uh, yeah so uh the 28 <laughs> year old was actually what i was drinking when i was trying to pair that with the 23 is phenomenal but I mean, it has a little bit of sweetness that adds, that, that works well with the spiciness of the, of the filler that, that you find in that cigar. So, mm -hmm. awesome. What do you got coming up uh, on or around or post IPCPR? All right. Well, we're we're working on a couple projects. One of them is sort of a re-evolution of the Connecticut, believe it or not. I think uh, it's a, a project that I'm going to release uh, for the show. We'll we'll have some samples at our booth. Uh, and it's going to be everything that we're working on is going to be released after the show. We'll have it at the show, um, but it's a, it's a very unique cigar, uh, and it's uh, a project that I've been working on for some time. It's the Connecticut, and it's uh, it's going to be called uh, Blue and Green. Okay. So it's kind of unique, uh, and it's a take on a Miles Davis song that I enjoy and love very much. And then we're also working on a uh, our reintroduction of the tube packaging in our Gran Habanos core line. And uh, we are actually going to release the 2012 Reserva Corona Number no. Five. Uh, many of you don't know what that is, but the, the the Reserva is really something that's very unique, and that I worked on for about close to uh, 15 years now developing this project. And it's very uh, it's been time consuming because we're actually aging the cigars the way it should be. Uh, so the Reserva project is is it's your we take the 10% best leaves from our from our farms from the production of the farms. We age them seven to eight years. We make the cigars in the particular year that you see in the, uh, on the box. So 2011, 2010s are the ones that we've done before. This is a 2012. And what we do is we age the cigar three to four years and release it. Um, sometimes we take longer uh, depending on if the cigars are ready, if we feel that they're ready. And they come out every month. A certain amount of production comes out every month and that's what the Reserva project is. Mm -hmm. So if Row number five, and you age it for 15 years. This is where you're going to be smoking from the 2012. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yep. Uh, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned in this line of work? Uh, many, many, many. <laughs> Give me uh, two. It's, it's, actually, <laughs> it's only think, us. <laughs> it's one of those things that you learn as you grow. Uh, when I started, I really didn't, uh, you know, something that was unique to me. I grew around tobacco. Um, but um, you learn as you go sometimes, and the biggest lesson has probably been a little bit uh, 
I'm very reserved, very private, and I think in order for the brand to have brand awareness, I, I, I realize that I have to be more focused on, on being uh, on social media and things like that and traveling and doing events, which I enjoy meeting people and communicating with them. So that's kind of one of the things that I, that I focus in the last couple of years to make sure that I'm more out there. And also, um, at the end of the day, the cigars that are good, if you're working with good materials, at the end of the day, uh, that's what makes a great cigar. Uh, don't let anybody tell you that a cigar is going to age well if the tobacco is bad. Mm -hmm. Always come down and making sure that the tobacco is good. If you're rolling good cigars with good tobacco, you're always going to be in business. Mm. Yeah, that's, that, that's good advice. That's good advice for sure. Um, are you coming to the Northeast anytime soon? It's cold up I'm here. At, uh, <laughs> it was cold up there. I mean, you know, it was funny. I was supposed to uh, be up there about three weeks ago, and I, I, I was, uh, I had to cancel. But I'm focusing on going out there in the next uh, month or two, uh, and do some events and work with my guy out there, awesome. uh, a good friend of mine. So uh, we're going to be working in the territory and hopefully uh, spreading the word. Yeah. Do you know what town you're going into? Or no, you don't know that yet. Like, uh, well, I usually go into Mass. Okay. Uh, you know, into Boston, and then from there I go all over the the North uh, New England territory, which we consider. So I'll be in Boston, and I'll go all the way up to uh, New Hampshire and all the other uh, parts of New England. Yeah, we are uh, no traffic. We are in about fifty five minutes away from Boston, and right. we're about an hour no traffic, an hour and twenty minutes away from New Hampshire. So when you swing by. Shoot me a text yeah. and let me know. I'll, I'll try to catch up with you for sure. Stop by. I'm definitely going to go to two guys as an example. And oh, yeah. see some of the retailers up there. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Got one more question for you. If you were a superhero, if you were to wake up tomorrow and be a superhero, who would you be and why? And how would you use your powers? Oh, geez. That's a good one. I mean, I've really never thought about it. Someone asked me that question one time and I really didn't. Didn't I guess the child in me would say, uh, you know, x ray vision, <laughs> you know, just for that. But if I was to be a superhero, I would probably be someone like Wolverine or something like that. Okay, uh, I grew up reading the comic books, I loved them. Punisher was that's really my favorite guy, yeah. And uh, really, the fact that you could age and still be the same is probably be one of the things that I would love. <laughs> I like it, that's awesome, that's so cool, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, how would you use a superpower if you were Wolverine? I mean, you can open up, you can open up cans, right, with the with the claws. But other than that, what do you think? I guess I'll just be a vigilante. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you go. Right, yeah. it, it's good work if you can find it, George. Right? <laughs> I think there's plenty of work out there to be done. So. Sure, sure. Well, definitely keep in touch with the show. Uh, if you ever find yourself in Warwick or Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, you better tell your sales rep to get going so you can come down here in studio. Uh, we'd love to, to, to continue the conversation for sure. I'm glad. Thank you for having me and keep up the good work. I think that, you know, you guys are spreading the word really well. Awesome. Thank you for the opportunity. Take care, yep. guys. Yep. Look for me at Instagram or Facebook at uh, Gar Cigars. Yes. Or uh, Garno at Garno Bono Cigars. Yeah, absolutely. You can also connect to them, uh, GH cigars.com uh, you can go down there and you can click on all of the social media links with Grand Habano they you can follow them on Twitter Facebook and Instagram if you have any messages or comments for the show email me at joe h at stogiegeeks.com George I want to thank you for your time Stogie Geeks listeners we'll see you next week <laughs> <laughs>